I'm just scrolling down. Jake Reed. Muhammad, Nick, Paul. Paul, did you get access to um the code? Matt, can you hear me? Oh, Glenn, are you just started the recording? Yeah. Righto. How's everyone going so far? Everyone happy? Two weeks to go. There's some really tired looking boys sitting right in front of me. They're looking really grisly, eh? It's this time of year, I reckon. Everyone's like like that what's that emoji? You know the emoji, the meh? Yeah, that meh emoji just goes meh. It's just tired and had it. <laughs> I think that's the stage at right. I think the teachers are worn out as well. Anyway, we've got a really good night tonight. I've been dealing with uh, James from the plumbing section. Can someone turn their audio off for us? And um, he spent James has spent a load of time on tonight, so it's going to be really valuable. The thing is, we haven't delivered it this way. We haven't gone into this much depth with the hydraulics, so take it on board. Okay. Also, um, when I did my road trip during the week, a lot of the boys and girls were saying how, um, you know, it's so sometimes it's so fast we don't take enough in. Can I be honest? I reckon sometimes, like I've been in the industry for 20 years and teaching for 10, I sometimes still don't know. Like there's a few stuff that James is talking about. I've gone, oh, wow, well, okay, I didn't even know that. So don't think of it as if you need to memorise it all the time. Just think of it as if you really got all these tools available so you can research and prepare yourself properly as a businessman. Before I start, I actually um, there's a um, old part-time teacher coming looking for some extra work, and he um, I think he lost 150 grand last year. Had to go to NCAT, so this wasn't a fair trading issue. This is um, because fair trading, as he said, they deal with uh, fixing up. The structure if you're doing poor workmanship this was a variation which is the biggest issue for builders and he said it cost him 80 g's to get 150 grand he didn't get the money and it was because his paperwork was no good i'm like dude how did he get to that stage he said he sort of trusted it too much and just did a few extra bits here and there and then obviously she's just gone i'm not paying it Spent a year, the job sat there for a year, and then the um, result went against him. So, boys and girls, top tip, please remember to um, sort out your variations, your paperwork. I heard there's a company, I won't say who they are, but they're up in Sydney at Cronulla, and they walk off the job. I think that's an agreement in their contract. They just about, well, if they don't get paid within that week, they just about walk off the job. Now, I don't know how it works with the trays, you know, if they've got guys working full time, I'm, I'm assuming they've got so many jobs they can just send them elsewhere, but that's their policy. So if it seems to work, you, you just, you know, be mindful. If you don't have that documentation signed and you don't have it paid for the next progress payment, you're, you're a big chance of not getting paid that money. All right. Can everyone see the screen? All right. Tonight, as I said, James is going to jump on board. We're going to talk solely of hydraulic services. There's a couple of changes, but they're, they're good changes, okay? Firstly, uh, thank you for the NARA team and the Maria team for actually coming. I know the Maria boys and girls have a little bit of a distance to get there, and most of you came. I think Martin just couldn't make it, but that was understandable. So it was good to see us, and I think everyone's sort of on board to finish stuff. Same with the NARA team. Just uh, finalise your stuff with Glenno, Frank or Adrian because we're coming to that pointy end where we, we get to that last week. There's two weeks we have after the uh, exam. Once that's done, we lock it off. And you don't want to be coming back because oh, I think everyone can agree the admin and the, the paperwork is quite difficult to sort out. So you just don't want to go down that path. That's for us as well as teachers. We don't want to even go down there either. So can you all make sure, we'll talk about it again next week, can you all make sure you go to your portal and make sure you check for your final assessments. If you've got an NC or a US, I think it would be on your assessments and you feel you can resolve it or you feel maybe something's been missed, please let us know ASAP. All right. um, progress bar, can you please have a look? We've actually made a decision, well, it's always been that, if you haven't got around 90%, like if you've missed a few attendance choices, that's not an issue. 
if you haven't done around that amount, we don't feel that you're ready to sit the assessment or to sit the final exam. So we're going to say, like, if you've done 60%, myself, Adrian, Frank, and Glenn have all, have all agreed. We're going to say, mate, you're not ready for the test. The thing is, we don't do any extra testing. We're like, well, this is not till November. I think it's like the 28th or 29th again, 2020. So just get it sorted. We're nearly there. Two weeks, yeah? Okay, so to finish off, before I um, start going on to tonight's lesson, uh, next week I'm going to be visiting at Wagga. Adrian's going to be delivering Alpine and Bushfire. All right? Um, could all the Wagga students make sure you try and get there? Just make a special trip. I know some of you stay online. It'd be good to catch up for the end of the year. Like, I haven't seen you since the, since the start. So it'd be good just to sit down and check everything. I know Adrian's doing a great job down there, but it'd still just be good to see you all. All right. Uh, the following day, I'm with Pat. We're doing a massive road trip. We're going. I'm going to actually deliver wet areas and pools, but we're going to do it from Griffith. So once again, those boys and girls at Griffith, can you come on site? And come say good day. Thursday, the following week, Adrian's going to deliver a little bit on electrical services. We couldn't get electrical teachers, unfortunately. So we, um, Adrian's going to go through it a bit. Obviously, we're not licensed and sparky, so we are not the experts. So hopefully, we'll be able to get it to as good as the hydraulics, guys. Um, I'm going to go through a bit of progress check and actually just not singling his out, but just going, guys, oi, sort this out, can you? Please get it done. The following week, there's um, Stuart. You might see him. He's over there marking, and he's actually looking at some build some stuff. He's a bit of an expert with um, some span tables. We're going to have a uh, – how long you reckon will be, Stuart? Maybe an hour's on it? It's just a bit of extra stuff that we feel is pretty worthwhile. And he knows the software really, really well. So we're going to jump in there and give you a bit of extra learning material. But that will be it for the learning material. All righty? Then from that, the rest of that week, we're just going to hassle you. Can you see? Revision, catch up, preparation. You can see we've been doing revision the week before. So we're just going to hassle you and hassle you and hassle you. Just prepare yourselves. Those that have been doing the work, you're all over it. And then finish off on the final night. Happy days. Are there any questions with that? I'll just check the chat box. That was pretty quiet. All right. So no questions. Everyone's okay with the attendance choice? Give me something. Give me something. Yeah? All right. Has everyone had a crack at the final exam questionnaire or attendance choice? Give me something, boys and girls. Josh, good on you, buddy. Um, I want you all to answer that. I'm going to make that um, compulsory. We want to know because we're starting at 4:30 in a couple of weeks. We've got. Um, huh? I'm fucking tired. Man. Zach, we can hear you swearing, dude. Um, <laughs> Maria, we've got, we've got Barry, is going to be there from 4:30, right? Forks is going to be there at Nara at 4:30 to start so get their quarter past i know wollongong we've got how many we've got glenn we've got like 70 or 80 and first in best dress we do have the other rooms open but obviously they don't have two screens you can use your laptop but you have to come okay can you see the last option online at 4 30 i've organized and confirmed only those students that have uh spoken to me or sent me messages can do it online now, the thing is, we had a student do this last year, and he put in the chat box, what's the um, password? But we only give you the password when we're here. He didn't know. So we caught him out. He said he was at Wollongong. He was actually up at Miller, uh, up at Sydney somewhere at McDonald's trying to do it. The reason why we're doing that is because we need that contact. You've had a lot of opportunity of being online. We still need that contact for the end of each cluster, as you know. Okay. I'm only allowing those, and I'll give you an example. Last year, someone moved to Cairns, so he did it up there. Yeah. So please message me if you want to do it online. All right, boys and girls? And at the moment, I've got 28 responses. We're going to have four, 50, 60, 70 odd computers going. So me, Stuart, and Glenn will be here on the Thursday night. Is that all right, everyone? All right. Sorry, I'm just looking at the comments. Uh, was there a Wagga? Was there not a Wagga? Oh, mate. Hey, Adrian, do you mind doing a Wagga option? Actually, there needs to be a Wagga in a... Oh, no, it's there. 
Am I blind? Sorry. All right. I'm going to get started. And as always, I'm lazy. I want you boys and girls to answer the question. Can you refresh for us? I want you to answer this forum. I want you, yeah, you guys will be having plenty of beers, I dare say. I want you to list the different types of services that need to be managed and planned accordingly through our construction. I'm assuming these are all being on site so much, you'll probably be able to answer that within a couple of minutes. So I'll just sit tight and wait for an answer. Right, uh, has anyone done it? Let's have a look. Tell us in the chat box if you've done some. Josh, love it. Josh Fleming, let's not worry about that till a couple of weeks. Plumbing, gas, and electrician. Any others? Adam. Electrical, water, and gas. Come on, boys and girls, give me something more. Sammy. Air cons. Maui, we haven't seen you for ages, Maui. How you going, mate? Yeah, electrical, concreting. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say concreting is a specialist services, but not a bad attempt. Naomi, plumbing electrical, Telstra. There you go, is another one. So what would you say, Telstra? What would you call Telstra? Sorry? NBN? Phone? Data? Would you call it? Hydraulics, electrical, refrigeration, security. All right. I'm going to put up my answer. Got some pretty good answers, boys and girls. All right. I sort of categorize it down to those three main ones. You've got your stormwater, your sewage, your drainage, and your gas. Have I left any out? For hydraulics? If I have left any out, James will pick me up on it. Electrical, you've got your lighting, power. Your power for your appliances, your security and your data, which is, you know, your internet, your Wi-Fi and so forth. Mechanical, you've got your aircon, your refrigeration, lift services, solar. Is there any others I haven't thought of? Can anyone? Water? Did I put water in? No, I didn't. Water is the most obvious and I haven't put it in. Yeah, any others? Oh, I'm going to fix that up. Okay, before I hand over to James, I just want you to start thinking about um, some of the services that you've used for your temp. You know, not only are you going to start organising and planning for the construction project, but you need to get sorted for your temp or your services for that one. There's a couple other um, random snapshots. Like this is a uh, PowerPoint that Glenno's put up for us. Is this your job, Glenno? Years ago? Yeah, just a couple of quick ones. You know, some most some new estates needing your underground electrical, gas, water, and your comms. Temporary power. So this is right at the start of the job. Meter box. Temporary power supply. Yeah, did Glenn, did you build that one, Glenn? This one. Is that cold? Cold out. You go right now. Eh? Hey? Underwater. So let's have a think about that. When you're going to be doing temporary services, who's going to pay for that? Have you allowed that in the price? Water is required on this side of the road, so you need to bore underneath. Who pays for that? Did you have to pay for that, Glenn? Did you allow that in the price? Or was that a cost plus contract? Maybe the only ground board. There you go. Just some quick snapshots with regards to your connections for the mains with your sewers and so forth. 
temporary toilet. It's always better to have a connected temporary toilet rather than your portaloos. There's, there's an obvious reason for that. And Glenn has just thrown in a couple of rainwater tanks, eh? All right. I'll leave that there for you to have a look at. I'm going to hand over, give me one moment. What I want you to think about, and James is going to go into a lot of depth with it, I want you to always think about as a builder, plan before the project starts and have an understanding of when the specialist trades are required to install the service. So what he's going to go through tonight is not stuff that you're going to have to memorise and be an expert in, but you're going to have to have a thorough understanding of like when they go in and at what stage because your planning is going to be very, very important. All right. I'm not going to worry about this part, so I'm just going to delete that. But now I'm going to hand over to James. Um, just bear with us. James hasn't taught this way too, so I'm just going to be in the background just hovering over to give him a hand. So, all right. Step one. Yep. I'll just jump in. Can you still hear me, boys and girls? Can you maybe just leave the questions for the end so he can just get the delivery done and then we'll do questions after. How's that sound? All right. Okay, go for it. All right, guys, I'll start up by opening up the PowerPoint I've done here. So, oh, I've done that wrong already. Yeah. Strong start. Show. Perfect. Yeah, I didn't know you could that. There we go. So, got a bit, got a print over Just here. Just go slideshow. Slideshow, no worries. Do you want me to do it? No, I, oh, well, if you knock through. So, we've we'll, got a bit overexcited here. So, I've the first 20 is just me trying to harp on about the importance of plumbing. So pretty much why you need the water water uh, water control. So you've got your supply of potable water, your water conservation, and just bacteria management. So I'll knock through a lot of that. It's just stats, if you want to read through it, all the important, the kind of diseases you can get if you do it wrong. Um, probably this one's fair, fairly important. The bacteria becomes a risk when water sits between temperatures at 20 to 50 degrees, stays stagnant. Um, and just poor water quality. A lot of that is the kind of conditions you get in a storage water tank. So if you get a customer wanting to connect lots and lots of things up to their rainwater tank, that's a, that's a big reason why you don't really want to go too nuts with it. You really just want it on your lawn, not coming through your shower. So we'll go through all that. And once again, and cross, cross connection control and backflow protection, I'll just touch on that briefly. So there's a handbook about all this that I've actually attached in the Moodle. So you can have a flick through that if you're interested. It's just got the definition, um, in essence, the cross connections of the links through which it is possible for contaminants to enter into your water supply. That's all your backflow prevention. So it's all about just trying to avoid things like that. That picture shows you've got a submerged inlet there that can backflow and come out of another inlet. That's a small example, but that can happen on a bigger scale and into your main water supply. So that's a big part while they really stress the importance of all this. So that's your hazard ratings for a more high hazard is death. Low hazard is just a bit of a nuisance, but no, not really endangering health. Um, that's all your levels of backflow pr protection. You don't really need that. So there your RPZs. They're all your backflow protection tools. So you might recognise some of them. Even things like an air gap will stop water supply from coming back up into and backflowing. A break tank you might see when they're irrigating a lawn and they don't want that connection to be directly connected to a water supply. So your water supply is coming from the top supply pipe and then drops in. So you've got quite a bit, a lot of effort to get cross connection out of that. Um, water conservation, I'll slow down a bit. So water conservation is a pretty big thing, especially in Australia. So you guys are probably going into your licensing and going to be doing quotes for people. You get a lot of customers that want to cut corners or do a few dodgy bits here and there. Oh, hold on, how do I go backwards here? What do I go here? What I might get you to do is open up that planning portal for BASICs. So, I need to work out how to do it myself. How do I? You want to open which one? Oh, that, that one is the basic planning portal. Oh, if you refresh, it's now open on the Moodle. Yep. Help up the Perfect. Yep. Uh, so I might website. even show them the website if we put that down a bit. And if we open it up. So if you open up that link, you can have a quick play with it. So this is pretty handy. You guys will probably get a lot of use out of it, actually. 
So what I'm going to do is scroll down to the water part of it. So I only got an hour or so. I don't really have time to teach you everything about plumbing, and you guys know that. This is just ways for you guys to find out information yourself. So the this is probably a big sentence. The water section of Basics aims to reduce the potable water consumption of all new residential developments. So you, you've got to meet your targets. So your water targets are here. So feel free to have a flick through that, even if as I'm going through to the, the next slideshow. So to no new, uh, where's the, I think any new home has to now uh, meet the Basics requirements. Is that right? You guys see that? Yeah, that's right. Which, uh, no new home. Oh, there you go. So no new home built in New South Wales use more water than the current state average. So they're just trying to bring it all down. So if you have a look, look through that, you can your fixtures. It'll go into all your labelling system that we'll go into as well. Alternative water. So acceptable uses can include into your toilets, your laundry, your hot water, all that kind of thing. So this is a pretty handy one to flick through and try and find out a bit of information by yourself. So we'll keep, I'll keep going through. If you want to fiddle with that, you're more than welcome to while I crack on here. Well, the next one as well, I'll probably get you to open up. Oh, that's all right. I'm going to, yeah. Actually, yeah, I will, just going to quickly do this video. So this is the watermark. You probably recognize this symbol. So how do I make it up? Let's go large again. Oh, yeah. Now that should play, hopefully. Maybe I've done it wrong. Might have to open it up separately. Is that on the um, website? Yeah, yeah. So, or even that link that on the ABC. But, no. So, tell them I'll put it up later. They can watch it after because they, no can't, worries. they can't hear the, hear the volume. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No worries, guys. So, we'll, we'll leave that for now. The Watermark Certification Scheme. So, what we'll do instead is go to this link here. And that should bring you up to the watermark certification scheme. So a lot of you might recognise that mark. It's on nearly every plumbing fitting in your house. It's also on every plumbing fitting in the ground as well. So it goes through pretty much top to bottom. Anything that touches water will have to have gone through a watermark certification scheme. Um, you, so once again, this is handy when you get customers that are trying, some people try and get things online, cut corners, or just on eBay, you get bits and pieces. If you can't see the watermark symbol in a picture, there's this product database that's worth typing into. So you can, so I don't know if you guys can see me when I type. Yeah, so if I'll just do a brand that we recognize. So you've got Coroma, which is a pretty big one. And it, it'll show up everything. So you can find the model. If you get the model ID, you can put it all in there. And what you can do, oh, this one's not going to have it. So that's something, I'll leave that for now, that's something you can fiddle with, even certificates on it. It's just a good way to double check that what you're getting does comply and we'll, we'll meet the Australian standards. So, sorry guys, I'm a bit rusty on this one. I'll get this back. So basically there, so this exercise may be useful if your quote requires fixtures or customer wants you to install one of theirs. So that's it, so I'd say always go to that one first make sure it does have the mark on it or if they got them in so if they got them on site have a look through make sure they got that mark on it the next big one is another one you'll hopefully recognize is this water efficiency labeling system scheme so it's a big one that's in australia it's now um, mandatory so anything with shower tap toilets urinals flow controllers dishwashers and washing machines basically things that people leave on for a long amount of time and just get to use as much water as they want so it's a good way to manage that so it's another one you can offload customers so if people are asking what's the best this what's the best that what will save me money here and there this is a pretty good couple of websites there that you can you can palm them off and just get them to look up their own stats once again i might get you to look at that one as well i might get you to open that link as well so here's all your regulated products so if you go through that it's got your shower taps it says who's responsible for supplying products. So if you supply them, then you're legally responsible that it has to match, um, meet up with that scheme. So all the certification is there. It's got that watermark certification thing there as well. And again, what we'll do, we should have the, should have another product. 
and I'll come back to that then. So once again, have a fiddle with that. You've got all your regulated products. I'll see if I can find the... No, I'm going to let that go for now. Should be on the next one. Yeah. So that's what I've just gone through there. So your product search. So what I might get you to do is open up the product search. And again, so there's only that so many product types. So I might choose a clothes washing machine because that's one that customers often ask about. And you go brand name. So we'll put a brand name in. I'll go. Uh, let's see if I'm. No, we'll go. Trying. Sorry, guys. Wait for a sec. Yeah, I'll go Westinghouse. So we'll do that. I'll search Westinghouse washing machines, close washing machines. So we got them all there. So a lot of these status is expiring. You can see what's registered, what's not. At the bottom here, you got calculate water consumption, which can be pretty handy. So if you if they want as well, they can have a look. So three washes per week. Say so you do that and show water consumption for 10 years, we'll make it five years maybe, and calculate water consumption. So people can see how many kil kilolitres of water they're using over five years per wash, all that kind of, all, kind, all the kind of thing that people, the kind of customers get real nitty gritty, or even you guys might want to really follow it and see if it meets the standards and if you're happy with it to be installed really. So I'll move on. So. You can leave that open if you want. So there are just a couple of things you can use just above ground basically to make sure you're meeting standards up top, the kind of thing that people see and hopefully recognise. Now I'm going to go into the licensed plumbing. So for, if you're going to use a plumber, you, ne you need a licence before you can do it. You need a licence before you can do any plumbing. So your mate that's just finished his trade or has done a couple of years can't really do any work for you so even if it's move a hot water system around out of the way so you can build a deck legally if he's charging for work it's well it'll be if he charges for it properly if you're going to put in a quote it's illegal so all that that sentence comes from the fair trading website so i'll leave that there that link is there it's all in the moodle as well so if you're if you're skeptical about it it's good to remember so yeah uh we've got a license check here it's probably might open this one as well so this is a very handy tool. So when you get a guy on site, say you don't trust the look of him, some guys just look dodgy. This is pretty easy. So you can, I don't know, if you want to just double check their license up to date. So we do Wollongong Hot Water, I think is one. So you can see there, Wollongong City Hot Water. You can make sure it's a local business. You got, you got their contractor license number. You can see this one's surrendered up the top. So if it was him or they said they work for him, you know not to trust them. And even if you're a contractor, you might be working for a builder. It's You can do it on builders too. If maybe if you don't 100% trust who you're working for or what they're saying, you can double check, make sure they're matching up. Oh, current. Right. You're in there. There you go. So that's been a while, but that's in there. So it's still current, still matches. So <laughs> that's it. So that's a that's a pretty easy tool to get yourself out of trouble and make sure things are all above board. Right. Uh, next thing, I'll smash into these. This is just your stages of plumbing installation to think about. Your connection to services. Oh, we've done it again. Hold on. Your connection to services, which include your water, your waste, your stormwater, and gas your internals and externals, which is everything that goes below ground before you put a slab down, so services running the ground, your rough-in, which is your water services running walls and throughout the building, and then finally your fit-out, which is the installation of fixtures at the very end of the job. So they're probably the four stages that you want to organise with your plumber properly. Like, I don't know if you guys do Gantt charts or any of that business. That's right. So you, they're pretty much, if you book them in as four separate things, you'll make the plumber pretty happy. So the points to consider out of that is the timing of each stage of work. It's what thing, this is an issue that mo a lot of plumbers have with builders. So I'm just trying to cover over what we've clashed with. 
Proximity of services below and above ground. I'll go through that later on in your standards as well. There is so much cover we need to allow for and how wide the, the trenches have to be and how close the footings. Your location of appliances. Again, some gas appliances can't go in certain spaces. And booking of inspections, which we, we prefer a bit of warning to, to be honest. If you ring us up and say the slab's going in tomorrow, can you put your drainage in? It's We're, not, we're going to run out of time. So <laughs> yeah, we're not fans of that one. Right, so we've got your applications and inspections. So this one, apply to connect is Sydney water tap in. So, oh, I might. So that's a video. We'll leave that video. It basically got, runs through the application process to tap into it. It's your plumber will have to apply for the actual tap in itself. So we'll leave that. Um, so you go. You don't need to connect if you're moving to an existing property. So that's one big headache. If it was already, if there was water services there before you got there, even if you're knocking straight down, you don't have to worry about running it back into the property. Um, so at the bottom there is probably what applies to you guys more. If you need a new water or wastewater connection for any type of house, including granny flats or dual occupancy units, you must apply for a connection. If you're building or developing, you must get us to check your plans, apply for a Section 73 compliance certificate, and apply to connect at Sydney Water Tap In. So to make it easy, you can engage a plumber or consultant to apply for you. So there you go. You can go ahead and at least put that application in. Um, but we don't, because yeah, the plumbers don't don't work for Sydney Water and may charge an additional fee for us to apply for that. So it's another way you can save a bit of money there and a bit of time for yourself. The Sydney Water website's also got a lot of information that can be answered. So Mike, does that link work? What have I done with that one? If you can get onto that link, I think I might actually have that on the Moodle. If I can exp open that one on the Moodle. So this will, the Sydney Water website will probably answer most of your questions, hopefully, that you might have for me at the end here. I've just seen someone's checked my licence. I've finished my cert for now, I haven't applied for my licence yet. So <laughs> I was sceptical about showing you guys that. <laughs> So, <laughs> I'm trying to offload it there onto someone that'll teach me. <laughs> um, right, so on the Sydney Water website, we've got the plumbing, building, and developing. This, by the time you go through this, there's not much that isn't answered along here. So, for now, I'll go connections and disconnections. So, plan your connection. So, I won't read through all of this. So, that's Everything you can apply for, your water connection, your wastewater, your stormwater to a single house, and permission to discharge trade wastewater. So, so really, I've just, if you have a flick through that, there isn't much you won't find in there. So I'll keep going through, and if there's any more important points, I'll come back to it. Yep. That, I'm going to get them to do steps for builders to go. Building? Building, yeah. Steps for first time builders. So that's something that I probably didn't know about the Section 73 compliance certificate. So when you're planning, make sure that they have that applied for. Now, I'm not sure, do the plumbers do that or do the builders do that? Yeah, I imagine you guys do that. So, yeah, so with that tap in, tap in the, if you log in, I might show you my, my login soon and I'll show you what's on there. So I'll quickly go back through here. Where's my I want to see if I can find tap in on here. So connections and disconnections. So go to this. It should be apply to connect. Sydney water tap in. Let's do a login to Sydney water tap in. So this is where you get your sewer diagrams, your connection approvals, your building plan approvals, and your disconnect service. So I'll give you a quick look what it looks like. This isn't going to have any. I'm just got to remember all my details here. Take its time. Uh, 
Maybe talking about someone else's boss being unlicensed. I've exposed myself for no reason. Got me two emails addresses back to front. You said the tape one. There we go. Okay, I got it. So this is everything that's available on here. So it's probably worth log, like registering yourselves, even just to get your head around a, a few things. You've got your water meter installations, so if you want to request one of them, that's something you guys can do as well. You don't need a plumber for that. Um, you can do your pressure inquiry if you're – so you can get a statement of that. You can – so if your customer is saying they, they're not happy with the pressure in their house, you can look it up, make sure that it's meeting what – what Sydney Water say it is. Uh, and then your connections approval is probably the big one. So yeah, you can do them all at once. So I'll probably Foley Lane, if we I'll just show you what it comes up with, I won't get right into it. And that's pretty much where we are. I think I've got the wrong address. Let's try and put the address for TAFE here. You can see, so you've selected what time of connection do you need. So once you Click on it and you pay the fees. It'll show you where the services are, the depth of them, and where it can be connected from in the ground. All right, let me work out what I'm doing here. Right. How do I get it full screen again? No, it's not that hard. It's current slide. Current slide. All right. Yep. So there you go. So this application is your water, your sewer, your storm water, and your services. Your water meter installation. So I just showed you that there. So once again, in there, um, please apply for a water meter three weeks before you need water on site. So big part of the planning planning process. You don't want to turn up and not have water there. And if you need water straight away, then you can just call that number. So I'll leave that there for you. So this 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 um slide slideshow will be in your Moodle. So if there's anything you want got questions about or want to go back to, it'll be in there for a while now. Um, your gas connections. So that's all through. We probably don't really have to go into that one too much either. We can breeze through that if you want. If you've got any questions, let me know. But that's your Australian gas networks, your home connection process. Um, they'll arrange contractors to lay your inlet service, so they'll bring it in from where, where it is in the street into a meter within your, or up to the, the meter on site. So they'll wanna check out your building plans first and see where they're gonna put their gas meter before they run their pipe all the way in and to where, where eventually you'll connect onto with their meter. So the customer chooses who supplies the gas. So your origin, your, gem, your AGL, your whoever else there is, um, that's who they go through and they supply the gas meter, sorry. so. Once it's installed, you can you can can then call your preferred energy re retailer to request a gas meter installation. So that's all in there. So they'll get up to the property, up to the side of the house, and then the gas meter's up to whoever you choose to pay the bills with. Inspections, this is probably a big one, a bit of a bugbear for a lot of a lot of plumbers with builders that they forget that we need to get an inspection inspector in it as, as well. So we can't just finish it one day, then it's done. So I'll oh. Oh, on that website, you can leave that if you want. Basically what it says is, you must book an inspection for all work covered by a notice of work. So do you guys put in notice of works for when you do things? So we'll, we do that, okay, oh well. We do it for internal drainage. Basically any time a drainage is touched in the ground, internal or external, we've got to put in notice of work and it needs to be inspected. So you'll get away sometimes with a bathroom. If, if it's all the drainage is above ground, you can get away with it. But as soon as it goes in the ground, they like to come out and inspect it. We think we, we kind of, I was talking to one of the teachers about it today, pretty sure the reason is they worry that guys have openings and things back to front in the ground and you start getting storm water into the main drains, which stuffs up a lot of things. Um, the inspections are, booked, are put on an audit, audit system, so you don't always actually get an inspector out. So it's something to keep in mind. If they say they're going to be there at 11 o'clock and they don't turn up within half hour, you can usually go straight ahead and keep going on with your job. So it is worth booking in advance and getting it sorted. 
because just if they don't turn up, it doesn't have to hold up anything. But you've got to show that you actually at least applied applied for an inspection. You also still have to pay for it though, even if they don't turn up. That's a neat little trick they have. So always allow for the inspection price as well. Oh, here you go. So when must it be booked? So you want the you uh, the inspection has to be done once the drainage work is finished, but before it's backfilled or covered. So if you've got a concrete slab going in or you're trying to do a garden or landscaping, it'll have to stay open until they've come by and done their inspection. And if it's not up to compliance, if the, your plumber's stuffed up, then you'll need a re-inspection, which will obviously slow down things again. So once, basically, a lot of tonight, I just want you guys to keep us in mind, really, because if you get a rush job, it can add up pretty quick and slow everything down. So usually there's three inspections. So you, you on the first payment, you pay for all of it. So you'll get someone inspect the connection to the point in the ground if you've done that, if you connect it to a supplier. Your inspection of all your internal and external drainage work in the ground. They'll want to see that all backfilled properly. I'll show you that in the standards later on. You get your final inspection on, on the completion of work. Once all the fit-out's done, everything's done, they'll make sure all your air gaps, all your backflow prevention's all, all correct and in the right place. Um, a lot of this is based on Department of Fair Trading and Sydney Water, so it's worth looking into different councils, may have slightly different rules. So ask your local plumber or the guy you use, once you've made sure they've got the licence of course now, and make sh and just double check that that's how many inspections are happening. There might be more, they might want to check different things. So we'll get into the codes and standards. So these are now all on your Moodle. I, I would say it's worth throwing on your thumb drive. They're free at the moment because you're a student at TAFE. Um, the plumbing and drainage standards, AS3500, is probably the one we use the most, and it's very easy to read and follow. It's only five booklets, about 200 pages each. So it's it's almost worth printing off. If you're going to do a lot of work for yourself and run around, it's quite good to check. And you can, if there's something you feel unsafe about that the plumber's done, it's a good way to quickly cross-reference before you... Go get yourself in trouble and arguing with him. So I've got the so the Plumbing Code of Australia is the one, the third part of your NCC Builders Code. So we we touch on that. That's more references. A lot of that references over to the AS thirty five hundred. So I might give the video a miss on that one. Oh, yeah, we might throw this video up just because it's what you guys recognise and try and. Right, can you just tell them I'm going to put it in the chat box? So the link's in the chat box, right? I'm going to put it up here on the screen. And uh, we're going to come back in three minutes, okay? So I'm just going to pause our audio and come back in three minutes. Can you just tell me when you're done? Thanks, everyone.
Um, is your mic on? Are you muted? We ca I can't. We can't hear you in Griffith. How about now? Can you hear me now? Perfect. Brett's fault. Perfect. All right, we're back on. See, so I'll just say it sounds like it's pretty similar to volume one and two of the builder's code. So where it's just more a matter of reference and and just something to go off. So the deemed to satisfy is part of the plumbing code, which is pretty much passing it on to the AS thirty five hundred. And as long as you meet the, the standards there, you'll be okay. So deemed to satisfy is how most plumbing work is carried out pretty much. So it's, it's why you want a licensed plumber, someone that knows what meets the standards and does everything right. And then alternative solutions, which allows the flexibility and innovation, uh, which, but mostly that kind of thing is got to be done by engineer first. So the big point there is it is not the sort of innovation which is developed on the run just because you're short of a vital plumbing or fitting. So just, just if they use a bit of imagination, it's not really, doesn't really count as alternative solutions. Right, so now we're going to get into the Australian standards a bit, and I'm, it's got four four parts. I'm just going to touch on bits and pieces, and we'll flick through it. So I'll get you to open it up on Moodle. So, oh, how do I? I'll let Brett get you get it up. <coughs> uh, up the top there, so we'll get it. Yeah, open them all up now. So we'll do. We're going to open up your plumbing and drainage standards, the Australian gas installation, and the plumbing code. Just on the refresh. So if you refresh now, sure. yeah, perfect. And if you open up the plumbing standards, oh, actually, what I'll do, I'll open it up. I'll open up myself here so I can show them where I am. Yeah, perfect. So what I'll do do first is open up part one, water services. So if you all got that open. And then from there, I might, if you guys put it on another page and just kind of go off what I got here. So your part one in water services, a few parts that you guys might want to look at. It, one that's pretty handy for you guys is section three. So this is your flow requirements. So if you've got it open, oh, so I'll now, oh, hold on. Sorry, we'll, I'll put this back down again, actually. I'll show them how to flick through it. I'll, I might put that over the side. And then I'll... So, I want to flick through to section three, so from page 14. So, this is your sizing of water services, your flow requirements. Once again, this is the kind of thing that customers will ask about their flow rate, whinge about it. Um, under 3.21, you've got the maximum flow rate from a shower. So maximum flow rate from a shower, basin and kitchen sink or laundry trough outlet shall not exceed nine litres a minute. So some guys, they've got the water saver device in them. I know a lot of people move them out themselves. As a plumber, you're not, not allowed to, but if you know how to do it, there's not much we can do to stop you. So that's all in there. Um, and then I'll, there's a few other points on there I want to quickly touch on. And then if you, so you want 3.3.2 and 3.3.4. So, so if you keep flowing down, so you pressure rate your outlets. So it's now at the top of the page there. So minimum working pressure at the furthermost or most disadvantaged fixture or outlet shall not be less than 50 kPa. So it, that's not a lot of pressure, but it's something that we have to make sure that the customer gets. Uh, and if it's if it's not enough, if that doesn't go through, then we need to look at sorting out a pump and getting a system in place for them. And then 3.3.4, just below your maximum pressure in buildings. There we go. Provisions shall be made to ensure that the maximum static pressure at any outlet other than a fire service outlet within a building does not exceed 500 kPa. 500 kPa is a lot of pressure. You will notice if they're above that. If it is more than that, we usually have to put a pressure limiting valve in. A lot of those fixtures that were watermarked from before, they won't be warranted over 500. 
all your flexi hoses under your basin, they seem to be giving out these days more and more. And that's an easy one for an insurance company to find as well. So I'd say that's something even worth having your own water gauge. They clip on pretty easy and just double checking that um, that their place is going to be insured if a water pipe goes. Because if the pressure is too high, they'll walk away from it. And then also in part one, we'll go down to section five. Screen back. Yeah. This time, sorry. The screen's just gone. On. Oops, sorry, guys. The screen's just gone on us in here. We're on. We're back. All right. Yep. So we'll go down to section five. So I don't know what page that is exactly. Sorry. We can't be too far off. So as you can see, as you scroll through, it's pretty spaced out and it's fairly easy to follow it's it's made for plumbers for cert 3 level as well so it's most of the time it's pretty it's pretty hard to misinterpret so this is probably a section that is handy for you guys to know as well so you've got proximity to other services so where you've got your electrical conduits wires cables or consumer gas pipes drains and other services um, are in existent pipes shall be installed in accordance with the requirements of clause 5.2.2 which is next to it and 5.2.10. So if you go through, there's a fair bit there, but you you can have a look. Because we always crack it, we dig the trenches and then electricians seem to throw all their conduits on top of all our pipes. Um, it doesn't go down well and it yeah, it doesn't apply to standards. We can we can get failed, like we can have an inspection not pass. So it's pretty vital to remember that that there is there is rules in place. It's not as easy as we dug a hole, you can dig you can throw whatever you want in there including some some builders do their own stormwater, which is fine, but again, it can't just be lying directly on top of the drainage that's in the ground. So uh, figure 5.2.6 there, it shows it point blank. There's, It's pretty hard to argue with it, really. So we keep that in there. So keep that in mind when you've got room on site, if they're going to put a trench up the side of the house, we, we need that distance. Oh, what else we've got here? Location of piping and depth of cover. So we'll keep going down to 5.4. So location of piping is another one that you guys might might be worth following and knowing. So this is all you can sealed piping in the wall. So or the walls located in timber or metal frame shall be installed as follows. So I mean some of this probably might even make more sense to you than it does to me. So holes and notches in studs and plates. This is something you can call a plumber out on as well. So this is just as much for you guys to help yourself. If we've taken out half your wall to run a pipe around a corner, you've got access to this now. You can pull it down and go, that, you can't do that, mate. This is a little bit dodgy. And once again, we've got the diagrams. We've really broken it down. We're not carpenters. I guess whoever made this gave us that much credit and gave us nice, easy photos for us to follow. Oh, we've taken that from you guys, so there we go. There you go. You guys need it spelled out too. That's good. So... That's it. So there's a bit of crossover there. So there's no reason to really have any problem with it. Most of the time it's pretty obvious if we've taken out a fair bit of a fair bit of timber that we shouldn't have. And it's in there. So it's not just us. You can't can't just say it's us against you guys, but it's in the plumbing rules as well. Once again, all your noggins. Uh, the plumbing grommet, that's a big one now. That's that's part of the law. So if we go through a metal frame, you have to have a bit of plastic around the pipe. So don't let them get away with walking off site if they to just run it through as quick as possible and run off. All right, then. 5.9, right, I will keep going through. So there's all the bits with under slab, methods of joining. You don't really need to know about that. Support and fixing above ground. Once again, if, you, if it doesn't look like it's clipped up, right, there's a whole spacing of brackets system there. You can call them out on and say there's too, you can even say there's too many. So, and then, and then minimum depth of cover for buried pipes. So if it's going under a slab, it needs to be 75 mil of cover. So this is once again, this is still your water services, so just your water pipes. So you can't just, you can't do it through the slab. Um, if it doesn't have vehicle traffic, it's all broken down, pretty simple there, pretty easy to follow. And then once again, you've got all your bedding and backfill. We draw it up nice and easy. It's pretty hard to argue with. So it's not just us whinging about it we need the room there as well we need to get below there all right oh hold on so 
Oh, so we need to open up the next bit. So, so that that was part one. That's your water services. So we'll close that one now, and we'll open up the next part of the standards. If I can work out where I put them. So here we go. So if you open up sec part two, so sanitary plumbing and drainage. So sanitary plumbing and drainage is so the water service is coming in, and the sanitary plumbing and drainage is the stuff coming out. So what's the first bit on that one? Sorry. Section three, all right, drainage design. So we'll go down to 3.6, so page 19. So it all stays pretty much the same all through the standards. It's all broken down, all really easy to label. There shouldn't be much that you guys need to know that isn't spelled out pretty easy to follow. So proximity to other services. So what, it's got all that again, the same rules, but now we're talking big PVC pipe in the ground as well. So it takes up a bit more room and we need we need to get around it. Again, nice, easy, easy picture to follow. Separation from other, other, other services. I guess this is just my way of pleading. Don't let the electrician throw everything in there um, and, and don't fill our trenches with crap because that, yeah, we can once again, won't pass anything if that's the case. And that's our minimum depth to cover there. And then I think we had 3.9 as well, didn't I? Perfect. So 3.8. So here we got in relation to footings. So you guys will hopefully be familiar with a lot of this. It depends on the soil type, how far out the pipe needs to be. So again, it's for both of us to work together. If the trench is too close or there's not enough room up the side of the house, then we need to work something else out, basically. And it's all in there. And if you don't like that the plumbers put it right up against your footing, then you now got a bit of arguing. You can got, got something to go back to there, really. Um, is that 3.9? Section 5, all right, so I'll flick through. We'll get there, guys. Hopefully, don't need no too much there. Guys, I need a rush over. Sorry, I also should have just control find it. <laughs> control F it. All right, excavation of trenches. So your trench shall mit trench. Trenches shall be made with a minimum clearance of 100 mil on each side of the drain barrel, measured to the inside of the sheeting or side of trench. So it's pretty rare you get a, a pipe in the ground that's less than 100 mil. So it means your trench has to be at least 300 mil wide. Um, so and if it's over excavated, the excess depth shall be filled either with bedding material compacted to achieve a density. Yeah, with bedding material or with concrete, basically. So it has to. Be pretty solid. You can't just put other rubbish back into the trench. Perfect. So 5.4. This is one that one of the older plumbers that works for us really wanted to get across. That you see trenches all the time in building sites. We've got the bedding around it, and they start even brickies will throw all their rubbish in because they're building up against right next to our trenches. So they've got to be clear of everything. They've got to be um, should even say it. The bedding material has to be crushed rock and gravel. So it's not just us trying to make it look neat. We just can't backfill it with the dirt that's there. It's got a standard of material that's got to be around it. And again, if you see a plumber just backfilling it with the dirt that's there, then he's doing it wrong. And then 5.4, your typical bedding of drains. So 75 mil underneath, at least 100 mil each side. That's your diameter of the pipe there. And a, and a bedding over the top. So we've got that bedding on the top, and then whatever you want to put on top, you can. It won't go through the pipe. It shouldn't pierce anything. A lot of it's PVC now, it, it's, whether it's PVC or clay, it's pretty fragile once it gets a bit of weight on it. So you've got to be careful with all that. Section 10, so it might, might be easy for me to I'll save a bit of time there. Hopefully. No, that's not going to do it. All right. Let's go the long way. Sorry, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, you're have to do it. Just ah, that's right. I'll, instead of scrolling, I'll use the side thing. I'll, sorry, guys, I'm a bit amateur with this system here. 
I haven't really used it online too much. Perfect. Yeah, forty one, nearly there. All right, that page hundred forty one. So once again, you got your spacings and your brackets. I forget what I was trying to cover on that one. Support and fixing location and concealment pipes and fittings. So location to brackets. Once again, that's all there. If you think it doesn't look right, say something. So this might be one 10.3. Um, pipe work shall be located so that it's not interfere with the operation of any door, window, access opening, or with any other aspects of the operation of a building. So if you've got a pipe in your doorway, if it's going across the front of a window and looks nasty, it's also just not meeting standards. Um, concealments of pipes and fittings. So you can conceal pipes, you can build around them, but inspection openings need to be accessible. So we've got IOs, inspection openings at the base of each, each stack that comes down the building. We need to be able to access that if there's a blockage. That's the big one, I think. That's pretty much it for section 10, I think. Yeah, so that's all. That's pretty much all the things in those first two that relate to building and what you guys might come across and have an issue with. Hopefully you don't need too much else. Water service also covers rainwater tanks. If you've got questions about that, it's all pretty easy to follow. All right, then we'll quickly go into gas. <clears throat> what I'll... I might not worry about dragging you through the gas standards as much. Yeah, get you going. So restriction on flueless gas appliances. This is one that a lot of people ask you for, a gas bayonet or like a point for their space heater that they drag in. So and that's a flueless gas appliance. Can't be installed in a bedroom, bathroom, toilet, sauna or spa room. It's just anything that can be closed off like that where people are in there and falling asleep, just not allowed in there. So if they... So anyone that says they're going to put one in for you, uh, even even for cash, I can't imagine a plumber wanting to put a gas bayonet in the wrong room. So <laughs> just be careful. Yeah, I'm sure it's happened. Uh, you guys might have ways around it, calling it a study or whatever. But keep it in mind that you, it could come back on you if they have a very long sleep with the gas heater left on. Uh, this actually, I will get you to open this one because this one's pretty handy. So sorry, we will go open that gas standard. Oh, how do I? Sorry, mate. Can't want to go back. Oh, there it is. Figure six point two. So you go to page 121 and 122. <laughs> All right, so this diagram can be pretty handy, especially when you, if you're doing an extension on a house, so this, along with the next page of 122, is a breakdown of where appliances and their flu outlets can come in and out of a house and be located in regards to a window or an opening. So even sometimes plumbers don't keep this in mind either. So you move a water heater somewhere and all of a sudden it's next to a laundry door or a bedroom window or something. You can all of a sudden, you, you break of the law basically. So it's... It, it'll go, it'd take a bit for me to go through all that, but you can. it all makes sense. It's not made to be confusing. It's got the diagram there. So feel free to have a flick through that at some stage. It's just an easy one for builders to forget, and then we have to relocate, and it's another cost that people forget about. And then Appendix J shouldn't be too far off. Oh, no, it will be. Sorry. Hold on. I'll just put it up here, save you guys a bit of trouble. It's a similar thing though. No, why does it not want to do that? I'll just go through, where is it? Yeah, gee. So 
They don't need to worry about all them big numbers. We'll move on from that. So appendix I is just a quick one. Uh, plants in outdoor areas. This is what the gas standard counts as an outdoor area. So once again, gas bayonet, bayonet out, outside for a gas barbecue. Keep in mind if you're building over it that it needs to, it, it's got to be still classed as an outdoor area in some, some aspects. Then appendix J, your cylinder requirements. So when people want to move a cylinder around, once again, there's requirements there that guys, people forget about. And it's usually is with a renovation where they just move it aside here and there. And, and that's basically it. It kind of got you gotta have clearance around it, clearance above it, access. And, then, and, and that's for drains, so it can't even be next to a yeah, ORG or basically any drain in the ground, because LPG, it's a heavy gas. So your natural gas normally floats. This LPG, anything that comes out of cylinder will sink. So if you've got a drain opening in the ground, it can it can drop into your drop into the drain, and then you've got a pretty ignitable sewer. Who else will try and keep moving? Um, so all gas appliances must have a data plate. So Google it if necessary. If 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 uh, if you want to see a picture of one, I was I was actually meant to put a picture of it. That Google bit wasn't meant for you guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> If you can't see a data plate, like if you're buying it on online, then use the product directory. Oh, it's the same idea, the AJ. You go to that website, you can type it in and see if it's actually a registered product. The gas is a big one. You don't want to be cutting corners with that. If yeah, basically I can't stress that enough. Make that's one where you really want a license builder, a license not builder, plumber, to be doing the right thing there and signing it all off correctly. So I guess. In summary, considerations when building your connections, your supply of services coming in, your proximity of services in the ground and correct backfill, and just the inspections allow time for it. Make sure that when you book us in, you allow for that extra day where the inspector, if he doesn't come that day. Um, that's pretty much everything. So any questions? Put that there. I might get a couple of questions. I'll just jump on. I'm just going to um, jump on back online, boys and girls, and I'm just going to check with uh, James about opening up any other stuff. James, do you want me to open up? So, yeah, well open okay, so we're going to open up. Do you want me just to just open them up now and you just quickly chat about them and then I'm going to put the activities up. Okay, oh, just yeah. one, two. Cool, no worries. Yep, perfect. Alright guys, so Brett's going to open up everything on the Moodle page now, so you don't have to open it up yourselves. So first you've got that cross control handbook, that's almost that's pretty much a standard for the cross control prevention. It's another thing by the NCC, so you want to make sure you're meeting. If you're doing a factory building, it'll can't just put a normal water meter on it, um, and that breaks. And that's once again in plain English. So if you read through it, if you're interested in it, it'll tell you everything you need to know. The next is that watermark certification scheme and product product database that I showed you. So that's all there. Um, then using that's just an example on how to use it. That's all right. So next one, that Wells water rating label. That's the actual label and what it stands for when you see that on a product. So this is all, I try to make it as simple as possible that you guys can follow along and research anything else that you want to get into really. Um, your licensed plumbing or after that one. So next is a link to the fair trading plumbing licensing. So it'll, it gives you the what's required to be a licensed plumber. And then we've got the license check link there that you guys can use. Looks like a few of you have had a go at that already. Sydney Water, the Sydney Water website, which had a load of information on it. And then that Sydney Water tap in that I really recommend. It's worth registering just to so you've got access to it all. Um, the next one is inspections, the kind of work requiring inspections. That's just a list of from the um, Department of Fair Trading again. Uh, like that link, if it's any drainage that gets moved in the ground is a good rule of thumb. The Australian Gas Networks, that's the connections for it, I'm pretty sure. That was, yeah, that's the one. So that's that, if you want to know where to connect to or how to go through, I'd say go through them. 
and again it's a pretty easy to follow website a lot of them don't try and be too confusing with that kind of thing then that's that product directory i was on about with the aga coming up next there and the next thing is just pipe work color codes for anything that's in the ground so when you're doing your plans if you guys have got a suggestion where you want to put water pipes or sanitary pipes that's the color codes we use or if you see a plan and it's got things in it so it's just a simple one that you guys might want to look into it's just frequently asked it's just a link to the frequently asked questions of the plumbing code of australia so it's if you guys got a few questions about it then feel free to have a look the big one is why do you have it <laughs> so it does cover why they the two exist that and the as 3500 so we've got a couple of no worries so there's a couple of other powerpoints and details there that brett's got from previous lessons so when you're doing the activity you want to have a look at that and then do you want to go through the activities well i'm going to open up so that's it for the learning content can i just say mate that's fantastic what james has done for someone who hasn't delivered this method before well done you nailed it um boys and girls can you do a little hand clap emoji on Microsoft Teams? Can you? Can anyone find one for me? Hold on. Let me see if I can find it myself. Can anyone do it? <laughs> Someone's doing it over there. Anyway, there you go. Look out. Hey, look. <laughs> there you go, mate. We've got it. All right, guys, you know, you know what, take that in, right? Listen up, before we finish, take it in because, you know what, I've supervised loads of jobs and I don't think I've ever really stopped to think to myself, look at AS3500. I've actually had that argument with a plumber and an electrician with the grommets. I've had that argument and I wish I'd had the knowledge now that I had myself now, back then, where I could just pull out the stand and say, mate, you've got to put it in, dude. I'm not asking you. That's what's required. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, that was just for metal. That was for metal. So, so take the standard and actually look at it and use it for your own benefit to make sure it gets done properly. Because you get a lot of guys that try and have little shortcuts and get away with it because they're not going to see it once the plaster lining's up. Does that make sense, everyone? Okay. I've, I've created a general knowledge quiz I want you to have a crack at now. Um, it's actually a good quiz. It's just general knowledge about what James has gone through. So have a crack at that, can you? There's two attempts. Now, there's uh, some Sydney Water Services, some, some questions with regards to like planning as a builder. And then finally, I, I, I was thinking about taking away, but it's actually not too bad. It's a just more into um, multi-story building. There's a PDF file in, in there. I'll go back. Could you just please open up uh, this one, that PDF. And what I want you to do is, can you see I've written in here, it's highly recommended. So when you when you go to a question, because it's actually quite hard to find, because I've done the quiz myself today, just go control F and put in a keyword. Yeah, there's one question that's asked about zones. Just put in zones and it'll pop up and then you'll be able to read the sentence and then you can answer the quiz. And that's just helping you doing your research as well. All right, everyone? Um, that's fantastic. Oh, Glenno, I think you can stop the recording. And what we're going to do is we're just going to sit tight. If you want, jump in and you can jump on the audio.